Welcome to Weekend Life. We're excited that you've joined us today. My name is Minister Nixon. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for Elevate Family for joining us today. We are very, very excited today to have Reverend Sibusi Somifeka in the studio we are with us. We are going to spend the next 30 minutes together discussing some pertinent issues that are critical for the Kingdom of God. We thankful whether you're watching live, whether you're watching on video on demand, please keep on sharing the messages and so that other people can be able to benefit uh, from the wisdom of the man of God that is going to be sharing today. Uh, Reverend, Sir. welcome. Thank you very much welcome. for having me here. We are excited to yeah. uh, to have you on board to Thank Weekend you. Life. Thank you. And I think it's your first time and we yeah. anticipate that we'll be able to have you more times here. Yeah going to us to the future. Yeah. Yeah. Briefly tell us uh, who is uh, Reverend Vega, what, what makes you tick? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah, that's a difficult question, you know. Yeah, it's like when you're looking for a job interview, you say, tell us, who are you? <laughs> I say, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, um, Mr. Somfega is, is a pastor. Um, he's a pastor serving with uh, Pastor Paul and so Change Bible Church in Gatley Hall. I grew up in the Baptist Church, um, ministered and trained and ordained in the Baptist Church. But after some years, then God said, It's time for you to, to now move into another sphere of ministry that I've called you into. And Change Bible Church was the, the perfect fit for, for me to be able to, to do that. And Pastor Collins plays a huge role in that. So, Spusan Fega is a pastor, but also above from being a pastor, um, I'm highly involved in marketplace. In the marketplace, I'm highly involved as, as a business coach, business analyst, um, a brand analyst actually, um, as, as a consultant, um, as a lecturer. I lecture at a Bible college, a Baptist Theological College, and that's where I lecture. So, I'm, I'm involved in quite a number of things. Um, but if you were to ask and say then, what is your core thing? I'm, I'm a communicator. I communicate a message. It's just that I use different forms of communicating that message. It could be through business consulting. It could be through brand analysis. It could be through sitting on boards, advising executives. It could be through lecturing students um, at Bible College and in business schools as a guest lecturer. Um, it's, it's various things that I do. But you, when, when you've got various things that you do, but part of the interesting thing when you, you began, you, you began by saying, I'm a pastor. Yes. How does that become your, your core? Is that a core vocation, a calling, your life, your purpose? How does that work? Yeah, I, th I think being a pastor, um, it's, it's, it's the core thing that God has called me to be. Um, probably not necessarily to be a pastor, but to be a minister of the gospel. Obviously, um, pastor is then the office that I function under uh, institutionally. So, but I'm a minister of the gospel, and for me, ministering the gospel, it goes beyond just saying you need to be saved from your sins. Um, you need to be pulled out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. It goes also into saying, now that you're saved, let's now look into how do you do family if you're a family. How do you do being a young, a young person, if you're a young person? How do you do being a business person, you know? So um, I, I then take the gospel message and I make it relevant for every sphere that I am engaged in. So, so being a pastor for me is the office where I'm able to do the work of the ministry. work from the office as a pastor but also you, you function within the, the marketplace yes I, I, I think one of the issues that I would really love to ask is to say that how have you been able to work in what I maybe use the term of how do we redeem the marketplace yes because there's corruption there's stuff there's mm -hmm. leg there's, there's a quite a number of issues yeah but how do we uh, when we talk about the marketplace mm -hmm. Uh, maybe just briefly define what marketplace what would be from a definition point of view so that people do not think 
people are hitting them with big jargon <laughs> words of dictionary that's true. that they don't understand. No, that's true. Um, in fact, in 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 my master's thesis, I I did a study on preaching the gospel in the marketplace, especially a secular marketplace environment. And in my definition of what the marketplace is, um, from looking at how Ed Silvoso would define it, so is any sphere. Um, where people are doing economic transactions, you know, where economic transactions are happening. It could be in an education sphere, it could be in sports, it could be in entertainment, it could be in the military, it could be in business, um, and in many other spheres, in politics and all that. So when you're talking marketplace, you're talking about a place where economic activities are happening on a daily okay. basis. Okay. And that is where I get to thrive as far as ministry is concerned. That is where I get to see Jesus being more relevant. As a matter of fact, if you check the, um, the New Testament, um, especially the four Gospels, also going to the book of Acts, there's a whole lot of marketplace activity happening there. That is why I normally say um, Jesus spoke to the marketplace. He spoke at the marketplace. He spoke from the marketplace. In other words, Jesus used examples of things that were happening in the marketplace to bring out the principle of the Gospel. But also there were times where Jesus had to speak into the marketplace, looking at the things that were happening in the marketplace and bringing the principles of God and how people need to do what they need to do to the glory of God in the marketplace. You know? there, there, there's, a, there's a concept, I, I do think many people have you know, got this concept of, whereby they say that we, we, we've got a Sunday life, yeah. which yes. is spiritual. Yes. And then we've got a secular life. Mm -hmm. But how have you been able to master the worldview yeah. that your gift and your calling, your worldview means that there's no secular, there's no, there's, there, 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 there's, there's no, there's no religious, yeah. no sacred. Yeah. Uh, God is relevant. Yeah. Right? Like, how have you been able to master that worldview, and how can we, as believers, be able to manage? And be able to spread that kind of worldview into the into the marketplace that we're called. Because a lot of people are frustrated in the job. They want to leave, they want to go and preach. Mm -hmm. But they, they could be preaching right here. Right where they are exactly. with their lives. But they're busy looking for somewhere, they are looking for pulpit, they're looking for stuff. But where there's a pulpit, we have yeah. we've never been struggling exactly. about ministering about God. How how do people learn about that? Yeah. People have to understand that they God does not see a differentiation between the church and the marketplace. Um, for God, those are platforms. So there is one who's called to administer the church and minister from a church point of view. But you can find that it's even less than 10% of the Christian body. The rest are supposed to be in the marketplace. If you were to look at the Old Testament, for example, the patriarchs were entrepreneurs. You know. Our father of faith was an entrepreneur. He was not a preacher. You know, Abraham was not a preacher. Abraham was not a prophet in the sense of a prophet. You know, he was an entrepreneur. He was a pioneer. He pioneered, pioneered nations. You know, um, you look at Isaac. You look at Jacob. You know, I mean, I mean the Bible talks about Jacob um, planting his 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 farm, and the Bible says in that very same year. He had a hundredfold harvest, and that harvest was not the harvest that we think about as we think about money these days. It was a literal harvest of a farm that he had planted. So he engaged in agricultural activities, you know. So we need to understand that God expects us to 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 understand that life in itself it's an economic activity, you know. It's an economic activity. Whether you look at it from a church point of view, you look at it from a marketplace point of view. With God, there is no differentiation. What is important is how and where are you going to use the gifts that he has given to you. But how then, I know you are, you are, trained, in, you are trained in theology and ministry, but how do we manage to, to, to destroy the, the perceptions that have been built for years? That makes a lot of people that maybe could be Fortune 500 CEOs leaving their work, uh, where they could be able to minister to 500,000 or millions of people to go and sit somewhere in a Bible school or in a Bible school or preach in a classroom with 10 or 20 people, where they could have.
helped you as their gift to put change and pick up. What went wrong today if, if a Fortune 500 decides to simply say, oh, maybe let, let me use a word, maybe. I know some people, I know others need to function within that office so that they could be able to have an impact. Imagine if you are a CEO with, with let's say, 100,000 people uh, globally. And every day you've got an opportunity that you can press one email that can change 100,000 people all over the globe. Uh, but you decide to leave and go and sit there with a congregation of, of 20, 30, or 100, or even 200. Uh, and you still want to be able to go back. How, how change do we, the world. It's impossible. How do, how do we, where did we go wrong? Yeah, I think we, we, we have this idea. Over the years, the church has had this idea that to be called is to go into being a pastor. To be called is going to be standing in front, uh, behind the pulpit and preaching to, to people who are sitting in the pews and listening to you. That is what people have defined to be called as. And yet, when, when, when we are talking about to be called, we are talking about somebody who responds to a call to go and do something that God has called them to do in a particular sphere. It does not necessarily have to be um, from a church pulpit point of view. It does not necessarily have to be from the office of a pastor's point of view. So I think people who are leaving the marketplace um, for the sake of going into calling as being a pastor, um, it is not everybody who's supposed to leave the marketplace. Yes, unless God has given you clear instructions to say, I want you to leave your position to come and focus on this. We cannot dispute that and we cannot argue with that. It's your conversation with God. But I'm sure uh, that only happens to a few people. The rest of us, we are called to make an impact into where God... I mean, I normally say, for example, if... If you started your life having a master's degree in business and you were a banker and all those things and all of a sudden God calls you into ministry, I don't think one bit that God says to you, now forsake everything you know and just come and focus on looking at the Bible and teaching my people. What about all the knowledge and the experience and the exposure? and the expertise and the contacts and what about all that do, do you do you try to tell me that you have spent all of your life wasting time um where you are and now you are now beginning to live just because you've responded to the call that says come and preach the bible and teach the bible to my people you know so i believe that it's only a few people who are supposed to go into that but the rest of us we are supposed to be stationed where you are. I mean, Pope is very clear. Remain in the vocation where you were when you were called. But, but also the Bible says that occupy till, till I, come. I come. Exactly. But when, when we talk to believers that maybe some are watching us, uh, or if you're watching us from wherever you are, please uh, text us, send us a message, tell us where you're watching from, uh, and invite others to be able to watch. We, uh, studio with Reverend uh, Vega. We are excited, excited. Talk, we're, we're talking about uh, Occupy Till I Come. Mm -hmm. So briefly, can you just break that one for us? For people yeah. that need to understand mm -hmm. that concept, yeah. because it is critical yeah. for us that operate in the marketplace, that sit on boards, for us that sit on, as executives, for us that sit with, with suppliers or people from all over the globe, how we can be um, effective ministers of the gospel yes. where our pastors cannot be able to reach, but we become an extension yeah. of, of that which God has called them to be. Yeah. Jesus was actually saying, if you if you read it in other versions, he is literally saying, do business until I come. You know, So that way it occupy for him is doing business. And when he says do business until I come, he's not necessarily referring only to you being involved in economic activities. He's actually saying every sphere where you are function from a business perspective. So even with church itself, you still, if, if God has called you to pastor a church, you need to dominate that space. You need to make sure that you occupy 
that space. You need to make sure that that space becomes business for you. So how you operate and how you function, you need to function from a business perspective because that's how the world functions, you know? That's how the world functions. So Jesus, when he says, I do business until I come, using the analogy of a man who went away to go and receive unto himself a kingdom, then he left uh, talents with his uh, servants. Then he said, take this and go and put it to work. Take this, go and invest it. You know, so doing business until he comes, occupying, it actually says get involved in, in, in investments. Get involved in anything that will, will turn economies around. It could be uh, socially, politically, you know, business. In any sphere, function from a business perspective. We, we are excited. Rev, I think one of the issues that I want to, to, to look at now, you will be you work and train young leaders mm -hmm. other than mentoring them in, in different sphere seminars and stuff mm -hmm. you are a lecturer mm -hmm. and you train and guide and mentor aspiring young people that feel they are called into ministry yeah. can you just share a bit about about that and, and, and some of the perspectives mm -hmm. uh, particularly with what people that uh, annoy those people uh, have neglected youth ministry and our youth are under serious pressure. Yeah. But what are the learnings, what are the experiences that need to be taken into account for people that work within that sphere? It's, it's number one to understand that young people are unique. Um, young people are energetic. Young people have got ideas. As a matter of fact, the world today uh, is ruled through the ideas of the young. You know, I normally say to companies that if your brand is not speaking to young people, then you, you are missing it somewhere because almost 75%, if not 70% of the world population, it's under 45 right now. So those are the people that you need to be speaking to right now. So that's the number one thing that those who are youth practitioners will have to understand. Uh, brands that are building themselves um, to become brands of influence, they will have to speak into that sphere, speak into the lives of young people. So young people are at the core of life. And that is why um, even, even myself, I'm working on a concept called Young Only Ones, where I'm saying to young people, you are only young but once. You'll never be young again. So the kind of decisions you make, the kind of things you do, the kind of people you bring around you, know uh, we talk about branding by association the kind of people you bring around you to build yourself all those things that you do um, they, they will they will echo into eternity they will echo into a future they will echo into a generation that is coming after you what kind of legacy do you want to live in the future what kind of a person do you want to see yourself becoming what kind of a person would you like to see your child becoming after you you know so when, when I'm working with young people or amongst young people, I come from that premise to say, let us build a future that is worth living. Let us build a future that we can all anticipate. Yes, we are living in a world that is full of corruption, a world that is full of sin, a world that is so full of so many things that are messing up young people right now. I mean, I've been following some videos on YouTube, um, checking out some young people saying very heavy things about their lifestyle on tiktok <laughs> things like tiktok and all those things about their lifestyles then you, you realize that really there is a need for 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 somebody to intercept a certain destiny and which is becoming a trajectory for young people because young people are yo, you know somebody once said you're going nowhere slowly i wouldn't want to use that but it would seem as if if somebody does not intercept then young people will be going nowhere slowly. So th those are the kind of things that are in my mind, are in my heart in as far as working with young people. And I believe that if we can grab them, if we can grab them young, you know, and be able to speak into their lives now, you know, rather than saying we will correct when they are older. But they will correct And yeah, you know, it never works. You need to catch them now. I mean, the Roman Catholics, they have a concept. They say, give me your child before the age of seven and I'll turn them into a true Catholic, you know. 
is because there are certain things that they will they will make sure which they invest into the child to make sure that by the age of seven this child is a true Catholic you know and even if they leave church after the age of seven but they never stop being Catholic wherever they are the Catholic ethic is the one that is influencing them so so I think the entire body of Christ needs to start thinking from that angle to say if the Bible says train up the child in the way that he should go so that when he's older you not depart from it it actually says give yourself time while they are still young to invest certain principles and you can be rest assured it doesn't matter where your child will grow will go will go to when they grow up even if they go overseas they decide to leave home and all that there are certain things that you have invested in them that will make them who you have decided desired for them to be in the future the, uh, that, that's a very part, uh, impactful stuff. I, I want maybe to quickly uh, delve into your, your concept. I know yeah. you, you are launching it in January. You yes. are taking enrollments now. Yeah. Uh, if you want to participate and follow up with what Dr. Uh, what Reverend Amfeng is doing, the, the details are here on the screen. Yes. Uh, his contacts are here on the screen. Uh, get in touch with him. I connect with him. He's a great, great, great man of God that can be able to impact you. If also you want business coaching and stuff that is important for your business, for your guidance, for your family, uh, with here the details on the screen. Connect, connect, connect. We we'll make this available so that you can be able to use him as a resource and he's going to be able to, to assist you. Rev, now let's go. Uh, now that we've gone to the marketplace, let's go and, and talk about the concept yeah. of young at once. How did it come by? What's going to be happening? Who are you calling? Yeah. Uh, how long? Is this, and I know this is not going to be once off, but you, you stuff that you're going to push for, for, for a long time, on a long time. Yeah. But what is the expectation and how can parents and people uh, be able to connect into yeah. what you're doing? Yeah, years ago when I was pastoring um, in, in Bronxbridge, um, I pastored the Tswane Baptist Tabernacle in Bronxbridge. Um, while we were there, we would have an event called Young Only Ones every June, during the June holidays. And we would have young people coming from all over um, the, the, the Tswane area, but especially the Bronxbridge side, the Gonshana side. And, and all that and just coming together in Bromus Braid to come and be taught about issues of life. Then we'll bring, uh, we'll bring Christian celebrities, we'll bring youth practitioners, we'll bring youth pastors and just to come and talk to them and inspire them and challenge their lives and those who need one-on-one -on -one coaching will engage them um, with, with coaching. Then when I left Bromus Braid, uh, unfortunately I left with the concept, it never continued. So this year, um, actually last month, um, waking up one morning, because I've always had this thing to say, man, I, I need to continue with this thing, I need to continue, but I was not sure how to do it in, in, in Gauteng and all that, because I felt that there's too much that is being done here where youth is concerned. But I still had that burden to say, we need to speak into the lives of young people, you know, and all that. Until one day, a month ago when I woke up, I just woke up with this very strong urge to say you need to put together a camp in January for young people to go there. Young people between the age of 10 to the age of 20, take them to the camp over three days and speak into their lives. So that's what we're happening on, 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 in, in January from, from the 12th to the 15th of January where we're bringing coaches. You know, we've got a coach that will speak on issues of sexuality and celibacy. Uh, we've got a coach that will speak on issues of personal branding. We've got a coach that will speak on entrepreneurship, you know, because we believe that young people must not be looking forward to, to getting jobs, but they must be looking forward to creating jobs, you know. We bring a coach that will deal with issues of confidence and self-esteem issues. And we also bring a coach that will be help, helping them to navigate a healthy spirituality because we are living in the days where spirituality is so diverse that young people find themselves uh, getting attracted to very heavy things and they call them spirituality and they end up being involved in sometimes satanic demonic things. So we want to help young people to say, make the right decisions now 
so that you can build a worthwhile future. The, the camp is, is happening in January, yes. but it's also during the time of, of COVID and times. And you as some of the other ministers also partly with youth, how is COVID affected? Remember, I know your time is running. Yes. How is COVID affected particularly uh, with, with the gathering? People, maybe some people could be a bit afraid. How yeah. do we encourage them so you know we will be safe? We have these old protocols. Tell the parents so that they can be able to participate. Yeah, no, the parents must be must not be worried, must not be worried. Uh, all the COVID-19 regulations and protocols will be adhered to. We are in contact with, with the campsite, Alta Lekker campsite in, in east, east of Kritori. We are talking to them and those are the people who are going to make sure that they assist us to make sure that there is social distancing where there needs to be social distancing and all that and in activities where young people will have to match and, and come together. Uh, masks will always be worn at all times. They will, during sanitization will also be done at all times. So we will do everything in our power to make sure that um, COVID-19 is adhered to. Obviously, if ever we do have a young person that shows symptoms, there and there, uh, in our form, we've got an indemnity form. But in that indemnity, it gives us the right to be able to rush the child to hospital if we need to, even before calling the parent, you know. So the parent gives us the right to say, as soon as anything that you don't understand is happening with the child and they need medical attention, you take that decision to give them medical attention and then we can come later as, as parents. So uh, everything is safe. Um, another thing that we, we are taking cognizant to is the issue of bullying and security. Know, because when young people are together, uh, some they come with their own attitudes from their own homes, they come with their own issues and all that. But we are saying as young people, we are there to, to be developed, we are there to be trained, we are there to have fun with each other. So we are going to make sure that there is safety and there is security for everybody. Okay. Uh, I don't know, we're running out of time, but how much is going to be the camp? This is why I'm asking. Maybe there's some people, kids that are deserving to go to the camp, but the camp cannot be free. It yeah. must be paid for. Yeah. But maybe there's some of the people that are watching yeah. that says that I want to sow a seed, yeah. be able to assist kids to go to camp. Yes. Uh, maybe I, I want you to. Um, uh, uh, we will put the details here. Yes. If you want to sow seeds to the the. the you could be able to assist the, ch the children to yeah. go to a camp meeting. The details are on the screen. Yes. Get hold of Reverend Mfega. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I know maybe sometimes you're going to be watching this post that, mm -hmm. but get hold because this is a minister that keeps on going. Yes. You, you will participate and see how you can be able to assist. Mm -hmm. uh, during the, how much is the camp, uh, camp fees? The camp is 1004 Okay. And you pay deposit, which is 50% deposit to order for us to be able to reserve a spot for a child. But like you're saying, somebody could say, I want to sponsor a child to go. I may not have a child or my child could not be going, but I can sponsor another child to go to the camp. Others, you can say, I'll pay 50% and that child will cover the next 50%. So the camp is 1,400 and people can, 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 can pay into our, our bank, bank account. Uh, we'll put the details on the screen. Please get in touch with uh, uh, Reverend Fega. We are encouraging people to be generous, to be able to support the work that is going out with, with our young people in our society, in our nation today. We know we're not only talking to, the, to, to this nation, but we're talking to a global, global audience. Find good churches around you and let uh, Christ be able to minister. But before we go, I also want to ask Reverend Mfeka just to give you one minute to speak to that camera, to the person that's watching. Yeah. Uh, just give, uh, let, let me say two minutes. Right. Uh, just give a word of encouragement, directed, and then uh, lastly, just uh, do a prayer for them. Yes. Uh, it's your say. Thank you. <clears throat> um, in, in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1, the Bible says, remember your creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come, 
and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. Being young is a privilege. Being young is God's glory for you. Being young, the Bible says that the energy that God has given you, it's your glory. So when God has given you the days of your youth, rejoice in them. But as you rejoice in them, remember who God is. Remember the fact that you will not be young for too long. What are the things that you are doing right now? What kind of decisions that you're taking right now that um, will have an impact on your future? So it is my prayer that as you grow, you will grow up to be a young person. You'll grow up as a young person who will become somebody who will influence other people, somebody who will make an impact in the lives of others, somebody who will live a significant life as you are living right now. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity and this time to be praying for a young person out there. Some of them are saying, I don't understand my purpose. I don't know who I am. I don't know where I am. Some are saying, I've got issues with my parents. Some are saying, my father is an absent father. I do not know what it means to have a father and all that. But the Bible says to us that it doesn't matter where we come from. What we need to do is that as we are still here, we should remember the Lord, our creator, before the days of youth, come to an end. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will help them, you will strengthen them, you will carry them along, you will show them their purpose and bring them to a place of their destiny. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. See you next time on another episode of Weekend Life. I'm Minister Nixon. Check out our details on the screen. But next with us, check out our channels. You'll be blessed. Thank you.